Hi Music Freaks, it's Mathieu again. Um, I wanted to make a short video today keeping exploring the modular aspects of Bitweek 2 and um, um, this time uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to hook up your hardware synth with Bitweek 2. So uh, basically you have uh, three uh, scenarios there. Uh, either your synth has um, USB MIDI capabilities, um, which is pretty much standard for any uh, any hardware from for the last uh, let's say almost ten years now. Um, it's if it's registered by a system, it's gonna be available in Bitwig. So if you click on the wig here, you have this uh, tab synchronization. And then you see every uh, MIDI device that is connected to your system, or at least that is that your system is seeing. So uh, if you have the drivers and everything uh, uh, properly set up, it's going to be there. So uh, yeah, you 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 can then um, tell your MIDI to go straight to your synth, and uh, it's working. I don't happen to have today. Uh, any gear of this type uh, but for the next two scenarios which are uh, MIDI connections or CV gay connection I can do this here so uh, that's what I wanted to show you um, first I'm gonna use this bad boy here um, Mook Voyager uh, it has MIDI in out and through and uh, a couple of CV uh, connections at the back. Uh, so we're gonna use it first as a MIDI instrument, like with a standard MIDI cable. And for this, uh, you would need a um, device that was present in between one already, and it's called a uh, hardware instrument. That one. So <coughs> If I play my MIDI keyboard here, my master keyboard, you see the MIDI is coming through because those uh, those squares are flashing. Then here, I have to tell him where to send the MIDI to. In this case, it's going to be from my Motu um, interface. And uh, now I should see, and that's the case here. The MIDI is flashing on the on the Voyager. It's set up properly. Channel one. It. I mean, you you set the channel here. Channel one. The 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 synth is uh, set up to uh, listen to channel one, so it's working. Uh, then, where is the audio going? The audio is going from this jack going into my interface on mono input two, and now we hear something. Um, on other doors, you have to. Um, you have to have two channels, one MIDI channel set up and one audio channel to receive uh, the, the sound. I mean, uh, maybe it's not the case anymore. In the last five years, uh, we, we start seeing this kind of um, devices here. But the advantage of it is that, especially in Bitwig Studio 2, is that this device is taking care of the sync too. It means that any latency that could that must occur because it cannot uh, the note is going to the system is transmitted from the sound card I mean the interface going into the synth the synth is then playing the note and all this process is making some latency so um, here if you press on the flux capacitor symbol you know flux capacitor from the uh, back to the future that's that's the thing you click on this and um, Bitwig is gonna uh, calculate the ping, I mean the, the, the latency, and it means that when you're recording uh, the audio, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna compensate this latency. Uh, so it's gonna write the audio exactly at the, at the spot it was intended to be. Um, it's pretty awesome that it's done here and not uh, on the system, although in Bitwig 2 now you have the synchronization tab where you can choose who is doing what. 
um, and uh, also the latency for anything. You can choose who is doing the clock, uh, who is doing the song uh, pattern position, and uh, who is doing what is the MTC again? It's our oh, MIDI time code, of course. So that's all in all pretty awesome. You have the in one unit uh, the MIDI and the audio, uh, and you can put the effects in there and everything. Uh, and then the real breakthrough thing here is the CV gate uh, thing. So this is the scenario where you have a synth where there is no MIDI because uh, or it could be a modular synth where uh, if you don't have a module for a CV gate, uh, a MIDI to CV gate or whatever, USB to CV gate, um, where before MIDI there was CV gate, CV uh, pitch, so that's control voltage pitch, it's going to change the pitch of the sin, and the gate is staying not in and uh, not off basically, but everything just with current before the MIDI protocol was found. Um, so that's the way, oh, now I can remove the MIDI cable, so we're sure nothing is uh, going through the MIDI. Um, I could even del delete the track here, so yeah, we're sure we're dealing only with this one. I will add then the hardware CV instrument, and that's this bad boy here. So we are working then sending uh, audio signals through uh, audio outputs of the interface going in the CV and gate in from the synth. I have my gate is the yellow one and the pitch is the pink one. The yellow one is three. So gate is mono output three. Pitch is mono output four. And uh, audio in is like before input two. And then uh, we should be able. Oh yeah, I have to be on the synth. I have to be on external, otherwise it's not using the CV in the gate. Oh, it's already uh, matched. Hmm. Uh, I just wanted to show you the the matching uh, the matching procedure. Uh, how can I, can't I, uh, default parameter, below the default preset? Oh, it stored it somehow. So norm normally, because I tested it before, of course, um, normally when you hook this up, uh, it's, it's not, I mean, it's all over the place. An octave is not an octave, and a half tone is not a half tone. Because there is different standards in how the voltage uh, relates to the the pitch, you have so the MOOC standard, you have the Roland standard, and all this stuff. When I first hooked it up, it was uh, all over the place, and then you press on tune, and um, that's what's happening. Oh. So that probably didn't work well because the song was too complex to, to make the matching. Exactly. It's all over the place now. Perfect. <laughs> that, that, that's supposed to be octaves. So in order to calibrate the, the CV, uh, the pitch, uh, it's best to have an easy sound, like something like sine. Okay, something with less harmonics in it. For example, this. So I put the cable back in and uh, I press on extender again. This is going to be different from synth to synth, but on mine it's the way it's working. So now, so now it's still all over the place. This is this is supposed to be octaves. So now we press on tune.
he's sending notes and listening to the synth and comparing almost it's almost there it's not exactly the last one is really out of I'll try another octave here and fill it, maybe opening the filter so it's gonna be loud and tune again It's pitch perfect now so uh, now you can uh, of course then let's go you can send notes whatever that is what I'm doing oh, it's beautiful um, now you can control your uh, hardware synth with bitwig 2 so of course, um, in the, if you want to produce a track featuring a synth that is hooked up to your system, uh, then uh, everything that you're gonna change here um, will have to be either recorded directly in, in real time in audio, or you will have to have an automation modulating the parameters you need. So every time it's gonna make the same sound. Um, it's maybe better to go for the for the live thing so you have this uh, spontaneity thing anyway if you're one of those guys who chose to uh, have uh, analog synth or modular synth um, it means that you're more keen to some uh, a risky approach like so you know what I'm talking about some people like being able to control everything all the time some people want to have this organic thing from the hardware use the accidents um, and take advantage of them basically so so I guess yeah uh, working with hardware is m going more in this direction working with hardware that has no preset functions it's even more going into that direction uh, it's using the risk as a creative tool I chose to have a mix of both I like to control stuff but I also like the tweaking thing so I'm more and more trying to find a an hybrid kind of way of doing thing and uh, yeah that's it for this time thank you for watching please uh, uh, don't forget to hit subscribe and thumbs up and share and whatever you can uh, follow me on uh, facebook instagram uh, links are gonna be below and uh, yeah just take care peace out